Hi everyone and welcome to this video where I'm going to answer some of your questions about the GCSE Results Day. The first and most obvious question is when is Results Day? And this year it's on Thursday the 25th of August. Some of you have been asking about when the school or your teachers actually receive the results. The school will actually receive the results the day before on the Wednesday. However, no teachers will be able to give you these results. It will be considered malpractice and they'd be in a lot of trouble if they did. In most cases, the only person that will actually get these as well will be the head teacher and the exams officer. And what time will the results be available? Now this depends a little bit on your school. The earliest possible time that schools can release the results is 8am, although all schools are different and the decision is for each individual school. So I'd advise you check your school's website or Twitter accounts to find out the time, or possibly contact the exams officer. Now what happens if you're unable to collect your results? My advice is that you talk to your school right now. Do not wait until the results day. Schools shut down mostly over the summer, so there may not be someone who's able to take your query. So talk to them right now, and the best person to talk to is probably your school's exams officer. Now some schools will be happy to email you the results if you're unavailable. Some may do it by post. The problem with post, of course, is you won't get them on results day. Some may also do this over the phone for you if you have arranged in advance. But one of the best possible ways is to nominate someone to collect the results for you. Now in order to do this, there are a few steps you need to do. First of all, you want to write yourself two letters. The letters should be exactly the same to the school's exams officer and signed by you explaining exactly who is going to collect your results. I'd advise usually a family member. Give one copy of the letter to your school and do this now before they break up. Give the second copy to your contact who's collecting them on your behalf. Now when it comes to the actual results day, have them come into school but bring the copy of the letter and some identification so that the school can verify who they are something like a passport or driving license. The school should then be happy to hand these results over as long as you've arranged this in advance. Next up, we have can you reset exams if you're disappointed? Well, there are actually a few options here. Firstly, there are November resets, but this is only available for maths and English language. In fact, if you don't achieve a grade four in these subjects, then it's mandatory and you will have to reset these in November. But this is paid for by the Department for Education. If, however, you would like to resit these and you achieved a grade 4, it is an option, but there may well be a cost for you. The school may pay for this, but it's likely they may ask you to pay instead. The next option is Summer 2023 resets. So you can resit in all of the subjects in Summer 2023 if you choose to do so. I, however, don't think this is going to be useful to most students. By this point, you would have already completed one year of your next stage of study. And the chances are, if you're already onto a course, this won't make much of a difference to you. There's also no information yet about whether there will be advanced information for these exams. There may well not, therefore they may be a little bit trickier to do. Finally, there is also the option to appeal, something known as a remark. This is where your paper is marked once again. Believe it or not, sometimes when two different examiners mark a paper, they don't end up with the same results. So you can apply for a remark. If you do go down this route, there's some things to be aware of. Firstly, if you have a remark, then the new mark or grade that you get will stand. It's worth noting that if you have a remark, your mark could also go down as well as up. So if you previously had a grade 5 and it's remarked down to a grade 4, the grade 4 will stand. Because of this, I would only recommend remarking if you were very close to the next grade boundary. For example, if you achieved a grade 3 and it was very nearly a grade 4, it might be worth remarking. It could still go down, but it's not too likely considering you're already at a very high grade 3. Finally, it has a cost attached to it as well. Some schools may pay for this cost, but it's also a possibility they may pass this cost on to you. The most important thing in terms of remarks is to make sure you talk to your school about the marks on the paper. They will help you make the most informed decision. By far the most common question I've been asked is will you receive the exact marks for all of your papers or just an overall grade? It will just be your grade that goes on the statement of results. This doesn't mean you can't find out the marks though. Just ask one of your teachers, but be prepared to wait a little bit of time. They won't be expecting to give out all of the marks for all of the papers to all of the students, so you may need to join the back of a queue. It may even be that they don't give you those on that exact day. The next question is can you get a copy of your paper back? 
Well yes, you absolutely can, but there are some things to consider. First of all, it may cost a bit of money. Different exam boards have different processes for this. Sometimes it's free, but sometimes you may have to pay to have it back, and the school will certainly expect you to pay this rather than them. Secondly, it may take a little bit of time. We're talking in the region of weeks here rather than days. And finally, it's not going to change anything. The only way for your mark to change is a remark or to reset the paper. Now what can you do if you don't get the grades that you need? The first thing to do is talk to the teachers and advisors that are on site. They know you best and are best placed to give you guidance about what to do next. Secondly, you could contact the college or sick form directly that you've applied to. It may well be, even if you haven't met the entry requirements, that they have a different course that also works for you. You could consider alternative courses as well. And finally, will you receive certificates? It's very important to know that you don't receive certificates on results days. This is because some of the grades change, for example, appeals and remarks. You will receive something called a statement of results. This is not long-term proof of your results. Your certificates will arrive at schools somewhere around November and they'll begin giving them out using their own processes. It's important to know the certificates go to the school that you attended when you did the GCSEs. So if you're moving school or college, you will need to return to the school to collect them. The certificates themselves are very expensive to replace, usually in the region of £40, and there'll be a different certificate for each exam board that you sat exams with. You'll need to keep hold of these for the rest of your life and use them as evidence of your grades when you apply for jobs. So when you do get them, put them somewhere very safe. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the videos I think you should watch next and also subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.